Okay, peace and blessings to everybody. God bless you all. We come together again for uh, some study time in God's Word. In the um, book of Philippians, we're doing Philippians 3. Okay, so you guys open your books, Philippians 3. Um, before we start, we'll have a word of prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord in Heaven, Father God, we come before you at this time, Lord God, we give you praise, we give you glory, Father, and give you thanks for everything you provide, everything that you give us, for the wisdom that you give us through your word, Father. At this time, we ask that you guide us with your Holy Spirit to help us understand your word as, as we go on to learn and um, build on build on that um, wisdom that you give us. So guide us, Father, help us understand Bless us on this day and bless all those listening and watching. And we give thanks and all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So let's start off Philippians. Uh, do like one through five. And we'll just we'll just jump back like that. Okay. And then uh, maybe we'll stop at eighteen. Or I'm sorry, at eleven. And then um, we'll stop and talk. Okay. So go ahead. You want to start off Philippians one through five. Yeah. And you do uh, 6 to 11. Philippians okay. 3, 1 through 5. Yeah. yeah. Finally, my brother, I rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you. To me, indeed, it is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of the dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the conscience. Mm. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I mourn. Circumcised to the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews and touching the law of the Pharisees. Go ahead. Six to eleven. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blame, blameless, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ, loss for the ex excellence of the knowledge of Jesus, of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered. The loss of all things and count them as rubbish, and that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is in which is from God by faith, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering. Being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain attain the to the res resurrection from the dead. Yeah. Okay. So um, again, as I'm as I'm reading out New Kings, you know already that they got these little titles and these little sections in the chapters. That kind of it helps. Uh, it helps me, guides me to you know give a little um, idea to what we're reading on as we're learning. Um, like in this chapter 3, this little title is uh, All for Christ. Um, and from that beginning, what you guys just read, we go over it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Paul says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Um, beware um, of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. And he's getting this message to the Philippians, right? This, this letter that's coming to them. Again, we know Paul is, he says that he's in prison at this point, right? And um, he's saying, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. Um, as we know, like, I believe Christians weren't the most well-liked people um, at this time or or by, you know, some of the Roman officials um, and their people 
are listening and hearing about this new Christians or these people following this Jesus. And obviously Paul's in prison for a reason, right? Obviously, just plain and simple, preaching the gospel of Christ was what led him to be in prison. But it was something he kind of expected and was willing to do and look forward to. So, um, he says, beware of the evil dogs. So, these persecutors um, coming from these officials, from these uh, Roman laws, or yeah, even, but even the uh, the church, the, the Jewish, you know, people, the higher ups, um, the people in the synagogues, the Pharisees, you know, that they obviously we know that they didn't like this idea of of Christians or Jesus calling himself Messiah and all the believers. They just we know that they didn't like that as well. Uh, let's speak up again. As I repeat it, there's a lot to say, but we're going over. We're trying to read and understand this top layer here and you can always jump back into it and dig for some more okay we know that so our again people commenting and add add on, add on it and throw on it i'm missing something or i'm and i'm making clarification clarify me then step uh, step in and you could add on on the comment um so then um he says for we are the circumcision who worship god in the spirit um, rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Verse 4, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, uh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I am more so. Um, you know, we are, for we're circumcision who worship, we are the circumcision. We know about what Paul is saying, you know, we're circumcision from the heart right we under we went over that we understand that you know the whole physical circumcision and he's talking about a spiritual thing happening of the heart that change happening in the heart. we're when you are christ's when you're the lord's you're you it's happening in the heart the change is happening in the heart and you're marked right uh, so uh he says he goes on to say um He's talking of speaking on that again. He's talking about that physical circumcision, right? Um, he says, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I am more so. Well, he was a Jew, right? Paul was a Jew, right? Obviously, he was circumcised physically. Um, and he goes on to say in um, verse 5, circumcised the eighth day. Of the stock of Israel. He came from the stock of Israel. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong. I don't know if Paul was a, a Benjamite. Or correct me if I'm wrong. Um, obviously the stock of Israel. So he came from that heavily religious um, part of Israel. We know he grew up under the teaching of a, of a high of a high ranking like uh, priest or whatever. Gamiel or Gamaliel. And so Paul was well educated in the Torah and, and just Jewish doctrine, right? I mean, he was educated. He was uh, and, uh, had intellect. He was smart. He knew uh, the law well. He knew uh, the way they lived really well, what they expected. Uh, he says, um, of the circumcised the stock of Israel on the eighth day, eighth day of his birth. We're told that the um, Jewish babies are... Um, or most kids, they wait a couple of days, they're circumcised, right? And I even heard from, I think, I forgot which pastor, maybe it was one of my teachers who talked about the um, circumcision and they, and they waited eight days, like how great God gave them this knowledge because something about the baby being born on the eighth day, well, not being born on the eighth day, but eight days later, the baby's had chance to live for like a week's gone by, is given the body chance to, like for the bud, the blood to like coagulate right in the body, like blood flow. And you don't want a baby to like bleed when it's brand new, right? So that eighth day that circumcision happened, if so, the baby wouldn't bleed. Like that amount of time went by. So you could, you know, just little, that's what I've heard. So just passing that on. And it's pretty cool how God, given that information from like Moses time, right? He, you know, on the eighth day, circumcised him. 
So anyway, but Paul's saying, I came from this old school teaching. I came from the religious background. I came from that stock of Israel. And he says, um, of the, oh, I should have kept reading. See you always keep reading. So then, yeah, he says of the tribe of, uh, of Benjamin, which you guys read. See, uh, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. So like cream of the crop, right? I mean, he was Hebrew of all Hebrews. Um, so a Pharisee. A Pharisee, he says, uh, called himself, okay? He says, concerning zeal. So what is, do you guys remember what zeal was? Uh, a zeal? A zeal? Zeal. Like, remember? It was like having great compassion. zeal for the Lord. Mm. Having like, compassion for something? Mm, yeah, um, compassion. Like, like zeal is having like a great, like, passion for something, right? Pretty like we say, language. like we hear the, the, like, they had great zeal for the Lord. I think the word zeal even comes from, like, they get the word jealous from, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> but I, I, that's right, I don't know, if, I think it's come from the word, so like, you know, we, we hear that God's jealous for his people, right? Like, and some of the Bible says that God's a jealous God because he wants his, right? He loves us so much, we're his creation, we're not of our own creation, so like, he has a, a like a zeal for us, he had a jealousy for us, but we have great zeal for the Lord, right? A, a lot of passion for the Lord, like so much we're so in love with his spirit, like we just have this love thing going on. We got this great zeal for the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. So he says concerning zeal about that, he says uh his zeal. Where was Paul's zeal though in this, right? He's he's trying to explain what he was, right? Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is the law, blameless. Um, so what did, what was, what did Paul do before he became a follower of Christ? He, he was persecuting Christians, right? He was like on a campaign to take down the followers of Christ Jesus, right? Because we knew his name was Saul, right? And we know the Lord spoke to him. He was blind and, and his name was changed to Paul. Or that's what we understand and what we've read. Um, so... You know, he, he says he was, he because he was persecuting the church. Remember on his way to, on his way to Damascus, it said that that's when he was knocked off his horse and he was blinded. Okay. Um, but that's what he was doing because he says he was, he was concerned was of the old law, the Hebrew law. He was so, um, so righteous for that law. Or he, he says the law, but, but even that Hebrew law, that, well, that, that old traditional way of being a Hebrew, right? Even so to some are this day, right? The Orthodox Jewish people, right? Well, mm -hmm. but they, they change a little bit, but at that time, he thought he was doing the right thing for the law, right? Uh, uh, for his belief, for his faith of being a Hebrew. Uh, he says, I, I'm, I'm well within the law, the right. This is what God wants me to do. God wants me to put down those who are going against what his true word is to his law. So the Christians were a threat to the Jewish people and was a threat to Paul at this time. He's saying, that's how I conducted myself. Mm -hmm. he, does, he said, I thought I was blameless, being righteous, serving this um, Hebrew faith um, and the law. And he says in um, verse 7, but what things were were gained to me, the things that were that I thought I was laboring for all my righteousness right the things that was i counted as as a score as a game right putting that mark on his post he says um all these things that i did back then or all thought i thought i was so you know doing the righteous thing or everything that i knew the law how intellectual all this stuff mm -hmm. the way he was formally he says he counts it all as loss i have counted loss for Christ. Verse 8, yet indeed I also count all things loss. Right? I count all things loss for excellence, for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Okay? Um, I was just reading um, a little bit on Elijah and Elisha the other day, right? 
and I was finding this like kind of con um, the sim similarities like what um, you, we had uh, first it was Elijah and then came Elisha right uh -huh. he was he, he came oh is that the story where he's like I want more wisdom two times yeah. or three times of wisdom yeah he says I want like more wisdom and, and you know I think it was Elisha that was asking for that because first it was Elijah he said what do you want you know mm -hmm. and we know Elijah was carried up for the that. chariots right and so, then he left his Oh, yeah, he dropped the cloak, the mantle, he fell, and then Elisha grabbed it, he struck the water, it opened. So, what well, I was just, I was reading it, I was reading these similarities with, like, Paul and Timothy, right? Kind of, when I was reading that, just kind of made me think of, like, Paul and Timothy. Remember, he, we talked about Timothy, like, being, like, a spiritual son to him, mm -hmm. to Paul. And, I don't know, I was looking at that, you know, there's, there's differences, maybe, maybe for some people, no, maybe, but for me, I was just kind of like, oh, that kind of reminded me of Paul and Timothy, um, but also, there is a part where where Elijah goes to meet Elisha, right? Mm -hmm. And he's he's uh, he's doing work. He's plowing. It says with twelve oxen, right? These numbers are always kind of like that in the Bible, right? Twelve. How many tribes are there? Twelve. Twelve, right? So, you know, I'm sure there's more into that, um, of course. Um, so he's plowing with these twelve oxen, and then but only two tribes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, we're talking about the Levites, right? One, well, so for this, for this instinct, Elisha's plowing, right? And then here comes Elijah, right? And he's like, hey, he puts the mantle, he puts his cape over him, right? Mm -hmm. Covers him. Kind of like, kind of like, hey, you're next. You're a chosen, right? Prophet. And I guess, you know, Elijah, Elisha knew what was going on. But, you know, he tells, he tells Elijah, mm -hmm. he says, oh, hey, let me just go back mm -hmm. and, and tell my, my family that I'm, I'm leaving, right? I'm gonna go on this journey, right? This path now, and then, and then Elijah says something like, "What, what have, what haven't I done for you that you're gonna do this or something?" I'm paraphrasing, and I can go back, but just for the sake of time, he says something like that, right? Like, "What have I done for you?" So then, Elisha, what he does, he, he hacks up his oxen, chops them up, and then he takes the the yoke. Remember what the yoke is? Remember the yoke on the oxen? Shay, sure, what was that? The, like the wooden thing. Yeah, the thing, the thing that went over the back, right? So he took all these pieces and he used that to burn like firewood, I, if I'm understanding right. And then he hacks, yeah, he hacks up all his oxen, has a big barbecue. And he like just feeds all the people, I guess, in the area there where he's at, right? So what's he doing? You know, you know what kind of what's happening from my understanding? He's kind of like saying, he gave up his former life, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, well, let me let me hack it all up and and just feast everybody, right? Who did he feed? The people, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, so, no, no, no. Was it no, it's another one. So then, so feeds all the people. Point I'm getting to is that my understanding of concordance is like there's a reference in New Testament when Jesus says he tells the people because uh, someone tells kind of Jesus the same thing, right? He's like, follow me. And then the guy's like, oh, let me go tell my my father my goodbye. Or, or let me go bury my father. He's dying. And Jesus said, let the dead bury their own dead. Mm -hmm. And then he said, those who put their hand to the plow, right? That's to do the work, to, to, to plow, right? He says, those who put their hand to the plow and those who look and look back, they're not fit for the kingdom, right? right. Pretty like heavy teaching, right? When, you, when you're ready to labor in the Lord, don't look back. When you let those old former things die, let them go. That's why when we're Christians, we're following Christ, people are struggling with sin. You got to dig a little deeper, dig a little deeper, fill your cup up because there's something not right going. I do too. There's things where I look back, I'm like, oh, I remember this. I remember that. I used to be into this. And I, and I sometimes I hear an old song and I, but there's something doesn't sit right with me in my stomach. I'm like, why am I hearing this? You know, like I, I that was from a long time ago. So I kind of ousted out of me and. My whole thoughts and mind is, is different now from what I desire or what gives me joy. So, like, that's kind of that teaching. I understand mm -hmm. it. Don't, those who put their hands to the plow or not and look back are not for the king. What happened with Lot's wife? Remember? She became a pillar of salt. Pillar of salt. Why? Because what did she do? She looked back. She looked back. They told her, don't look back. She looked back onto the world. And, and just like, you know, Jesus told, said, um, told the rich young ruler, right? You did all these things to follow the law. Now go give away everything you own. To the poor and come and follow me and then what what did he do okay. he put his head down walked away so you got to be willing to let go of this life and you got to be willing to let go of the things of this world 
first John right the, this world is falling away you know and the lusts of it the lust of the eye the lust of the flesh you know and that's kind of a teaching on to I think even our daily lives you know we go through pain I'm going through my struggles right now physically and we know people who are sick we just got some news of a young teen boy we know or a friend of a friend who's dealing with cancer now so like it hurts it's sad it does hurt and all that but we're being broken down you know the wages of sin is death you know like everyone talking about why are people dying all of a sudden i hear other brothers talking oh people are dying because of this they pull up scripture oh, people are dying well people are dying all the time right the wages of sin is death we're not going to live here forever so, I mean, we try to come up with passages to justify what's happening. But Jesus said, I, I, I tell you all things. I have foretold you all things. These things must come to pass. Even through the agony, the, 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 the pain, the affliction, the struggles, the illnesses. And we're sad and sometimes it's hard. It's not easy. I mean, Lord knows I, I would, you know, something happened to you guys. I, you know, I can't imagine people have lost their children. This is a, excuse me, this is a hard thing in life. But through... Christ Jesus through his through his word through the Holy Spirit we understand what enduring inflictions enduring pains and Paul saying where I'm weak I am strong in fact he even kind of welcomed strife he welcomed imprisonment he welcomed the fact that he was going to die to spread the gospel because we're dying daily man we're dying daily you know what did Paul say something about you know we we, we are persecuted and killed all day long you know, the Christians back then, uh, like a good brother, uh, we learned from, uh, he talked about the Fox's Book of Martyrs. Remember, we talked about that, all the martyrs. It, it kind of lists from the apostles all the way down to, like, past Nero and all the other Roman emperors, like how they persecuted Christians. And like, some of the movies they try to remake, they're burning them alive on the cross. They're hacking up their kids. And things like that still go on. Uh, you know, they do. Um, in other countries, we've talked about, right? So getting back to what it is, is, you got to be willing to put your hand to the plow, right? And don't look back to this world. Don't look back on the things of this world that the carnal and the flesh desire. Look on to the Lord because that's 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 going to lead to death and destruction. It's going to lead you're going to you're going to fade away with the world. Don't look back. See, many people they put their hand to the plow but they're still looking back. And and sometimes you got to have a good discernment of of when there's certain scoops and measure of this world that you got to live in. We all live in this fallen world. We all live in this great Babylon. Everyone talking about, you know, oh, I'm going to do this to be extra sanctified. I'm going to do that to be extra holy. And I'm going to, you know, you have to do this tradition. And all this is a phony tradition and all these holidays, you know, and pagan, pagan, pagan. Uh, you know what? I got news for you. You live in a paganistic world. You, you, you were born there. We live. I depend on this system right now. I, that's just the way it is. But you know what? So did Daniel. So did Joseph. And the Lord will hewn out who he needs to hewn out and pull out his people. So, um, but yes, we need discernment of what we participate in, what we do. You got to have good discernment, good measure of what you're going to, you know, attack, um, the way you're going to walk in this world. Just know that it's your, your, what your works are, your job, your school, whatever you're doing in this life, it's, it's, it's to get by. But put God first. Put God first. You know, let's stay away from things that are going to make you stumble. Okay. Um, moving on. A lot of chatter for me. I know. Um, wanted to share that. So Paul says um, that he, uh, for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, I count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. All the things that we thought formerly were great and all the things that we thought were righteousness and our good works and all these good and bad. And it was all mixed up in one box. He says it's all rubbish. It's 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 um, everything is about. About gaining Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. Yet, indeed, I also count. I'm sorry. I'm reading again. Verse nine and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith. Okay. Uh, what he found in the Lord, not about his own righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which he was talking about. He remember he thought it was righteous because the old the old law, the old Hebrew law, right? That he thought that's what made him righteous to God. But that was of 
selfish. That was kind of was selfishness. That was man's uh, a man's form of righteousness, or, or 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 doing what they thought was gonna keep them holy, right, and keep them way up here. Uh, he says, which is that was from the law, that righteousness. But he said, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. You know, like there's what was that passage? You know, God says, I I I want your I want your obedience, not your sacrifice, right? And I'm probably misquoting that, but more or less, you know, he wants um he doesn't want sacrifice, he wants our obedience. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the bringing of the animals was they're being obedient to a point. He told them to do that. They're being kind of traditional and all that, but he was trying to teach them something else. And they just wanted to be religious. They thought that was going to cut it. In their heart, they carried sin. Uh, verse 10, that I may know him, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That he wants to, to know the Lord. The whole purpose is to know the Lord and what he has for us. He's, and he says, and the power of his resurrection. What is resurrection? What's resurrection? Uh, you rise. To go up. To, to go right. up or to, yeah. Raise then, from the dead. Right. And then we're, that makes us alive, right? Mm -hmm. So that inheritance we of eternal life. Sin. Yeah. And then to live again eternally, right? This resurrection is passing from death to life, right? And, and that's what he says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Ooh, you see that? And the fellowship of his sufferings. What's fellowship? What's fellowship? Uh, to have a like, bond or something? Yeah, like coming together, right? So he says that fellowship, that bond, that, that same uh, brothers in arms, that same going through the same thing, that togetherness of his sufferings. Who Christ suffered he was alive, right? He went through that suffering, right, on the cross. You see that old self dies on the cross. And we, we're going to, we're in the very uh, possibilities of even if we have to suffer in the flesh for Christ's namesake, we are commanded to do so. But with good, with joy though, right? With joy, because uh, like I said, um, like, you know, you're not going to live forever in this world, right? We don't know how long we're going to live, but through him, we have promise of eternal life. I mean, that's pretty reassuring to me. I, I don't know about most people. Um, so it doesn't mean, you know, we're all going to be going through this persecution of imprisonment and torturousness, but one form or fashion, yes, you will suffer some type of persecution or resistance, right, from the world. And then he says, um, being confronted, I'm sorry, being conformed to his death, his, um, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, Right. If, if by any means I may attain um, or I may arrive to the resurrection from the dead, right? Though we die, old self dying on the cross, in the flesh we're going to die, right? But through Christ Jesus, we're going to arrive, we're going to be lifted up on the resurrection, Right? That great day of judgment, right? Paul says we're all changed in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye. I tell you something, we're all changed, right? So that day of the Lord, when he comes back, right? Mm -hmm. And that judgment's going on, you know? I mean, it's 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 trophy time for the saints, right? It's mm -hmm. crown time. It, it's your 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 garment time. I mean, you're, you know what I mean? It, it's the rest of the world, the ungodly, what's happening to them. They're judged. They're they're, they're done. The earth's going to melt and the Lord's going to shake the whole blanket of the earth's landscape. And, and he's, when his foot touches down on that Mount of Olives, things are going to be changed, right? That great battle's going to go on, that final war of Armageddon. But his saints are going to be changed, right? When he comes back, we'll change. Right? Yeah. And I, I won't get into the whole rapture deal and all that, but when he comes back, there is a change, right? That great battle goes on. I mean, the world's going to really be falling to shambles up until that time. 
the evil one antichrist was already put his foot down in the world satan's fallen from heaven you know revelation 12 so you know be ready be steadfast in the lord or, or understand and rejoice in the fact that the lord has made a way for us to eternal life right sufferings persecutions afflictions pain death illnesses right these things are expected right are they? Mm -hmm. Should we be just happy-go-lucky, bleeding heart Christians and just look the other way saying, God wants us to just live here well forever, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we're just, just heal me from everything. Take me away from the bad, you know? And, and um, you know, don't make me face the music. Just fly me out of here. This is in contrary to what the Bible is telling us. I'm sorry, this, people may not agree, but this is in contrary we have a job to do as Christians, and we're, we're told how to do it. We're told how to do it. So fulfill your ministry. Preach the gospel as it's written, right? Help save souls. People are dragged away, millions every day, to that pit of the dead. Dragged away, casted out to the pit of the dead. And many will be casted out to, that, to the lake of fire. And that final judgment, we're trying to yell and scream for their souls. You know, so we turn from this duty. We turn from this obligation. We are turning away from the God. In Revelation 21, right? Eight something. Then 21, I, who were the first to be tossed in, like the good brother has mentioned, um, the cowardly. And that that makes, that made me think. Uh, to be lukewarm, Jesus, the Lord says, you know, I will vomit you from my mouth. I wish you either cold or hot, but to be lukewarm, bleh, I, I, you're, you're just, don't take that great gold and treasure and sit on it, invest in it, as Jesus told in this parable, okay? All right, good word, good reading, good teaching, good learning. Okay, so let's uh, have a little prayer out. And you want to pray out? Yeah. I'll pray out. You want to pray out? I'll pray out. <laughs> I'll be chicken, yeah. Okay, let's pray. Um, I hope this video blesses you guys. Uh, subscribe and like and share. We're learning. If you find anything that's different or you want to refute something or speak on something, um, speak on it. I don't sometimes hear and hear. It doesn't always get to get out what I mean. Um, speak on it. Comment. Share with us. Um, and that's all I got to say about that. And that's all I got to say about that. Okay. Blessings to you all. And um, you got any teens you know or you have teenagers People, you know, we got a team ministry, which I posted on another thing, and I'll post again. Uh, my daughter's team ministry. Um, our teens need it more than ever. Our young people need the gospel more than ever. They're dying. Drugs are at a, a terrible rate today. There's drugs in the world like never before. Uh, young people need guidance, and, they're, and they are thirsty for wisdom. Okay? So, blessings to you guys. Love you all. We'll see you on the next one. Let's pray out, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord in heaven. Thank you for this time in your word, Lord God. You're such a good father. You're such a good teacher. You're a just and righteous and fair God. The Bible says you cannot lie, Father, so you speak truth to us. Thank you for the guidance and the confidence in your wisdom, Father. I always have a slow start, but have a good ending, a good landing. Um, bless us here in this house and my family. And bless all those watching and listening. And bless the whole body of Christ around the world. And may more souls be one for the kingdom, God. Thank you for this time in your word. We pray all these things. Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah, amen. See you on the next one.